everybody. My name is Sandra. Welcome to today's video. We are going to take a look at my April goals using my Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets Goal Planner. Um, you guys, if you have watched my channel, I talk about this planner all the time. And when I say planner, it's not really a planner per se. It is to help with goals and to create goals, maintain them, and to check them off once you've completed them. So we're going to go to April. Um, normally what I do is I like to fill this page out at the end of the month and currently we're still sitting on the 17th. So happy St. Patrick's Day to anyone watching. So I'm not going to fill this out today, but I will jump right into April. This is a quarter refresh. And uh, if you guys have seen how Power Sheets works in the past, they work on a quarterly system as well as a monthly system with spots on the tending list to kind of check off your daily and weekly maintenance habits. Um, so I'm, I'm not really 100% prepared for this because um, I don't really have like specific goals, I guess. Like, I don't really know how to say this. Like, what this is, is like a refreshed goal section, um, just kind of a check-in for every quarter. So I think what we'll do is fill them out. Um, I'm not 100% prepared for this because I completely forgot that it was a spring refresh, but I do have some ideas um, for this quarter. So I'm pretty much looking at this as like a spring going into summer kind of quarter. So I think this covers, let's see, I think there's also a, a summer one too. Um, let's check July here. Yeah, so July is the summer refresh. So here we've got April, May, and June. And we do have quite a lot of work to do for this quarter. So let's get started. Um, first, I'm going to take a look at the um, evaluation check-in and just kind of to see where I stand. So what we'll do first is put the number previous that we had kind of come up with and then maybe I'll write a little note here and then mark where I'm standing right now. You have to be your biggest fan and when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working but there's something inside of you that says I just have to follow that because you don't know who you're going to be. Who you're going to be. Okay, so I just want to talk about this a little bit. Um, maybe this is because I'm coming out of a funk, kind of like a depression um, mode, especially with seasonal affective disorder, because I do suffer from that very um, drastically. Actually, it's it's um, January and February is really, really hard for me. I don't medicate. I wish to stay off antidepressants because it just affects me too much. I would have to stay on them all the time and I don't want that. Um, but it's mostly the weather. It's having to stay inside a lot. Um, we don't do much winter sports because it gets, you know, some days can be minus 15, some days can be minus 50. <laughs> so it really does depend. And a lot of this, I feel like I had a, a very a negative take on this evaluation, but I think it's critical that you are honest with yourself. And I feel, I feel like this is an honest evaluation. So right now, um, my health is kind of suffering a little bit. Um, basically, I can't really focus on anything because all I feel is pain, pain every day. I have severe plantar fasciitis and I'm almost worried it might be something else. So I need to make an appointment with the doctor and I'm kind of afraid to but I need to do it because I'm in so much severe pain. I've been trying exercises, nothing's helped. And um, I've been medicating every night, like it's bad. Um, I didn't know how bad chronic pain, severe chronic pain was every day, but plantar fasciitis can get super bad. So basically in my mind, that's all I feel is that pain. And I still have to do all the things, take care of my kids, do all my work, clean the house, um, I'm by myself for two weeks at a time because my husband works out of town. So it's very difficult, you guys. Um, I'm sure that you've probably been through something similar yourself and you can relate. But I've got rotator cuff pain and my arms go numb, especially my writing arm. So if I write a lot, my, my hand goes numb. And I want to lose weight. I've gained 10 pounds because the last two months have been hard. I have been eating uh, way more junk food than I want. Um, 
like for instance, because the prices of things, like I was talking about strawberries in my budgeting videos, the cost of like one pound of strawberries got up to $10.99 over winter. Like it's outrageous, $10.99 Canadian for one pound. And they weren't even that good of quality. And <laughs> that's literally all that my son and daughter eat. They will not eat any other fruit I have tried. They detest, they, they won't eat frozen stuff. They won't eat dried stuff. So it's only strawberries. And if I don't buy that, they don't get the proper nutrition. So I really have no choice. I can't starve them. And um, because I'm saving it for them, I don't eat them. And I can't afford to get vitamins. because It's not because we're poor. We do have lots of money. But we also have a lot of other areas in our life that we have that money go to, um, specifically debt. So that's a whole other matter. Um, you'll see in my financial in a minute here. But yeah, I want to work out. I do have things, ideas in place, but I just, I literally have no time. I'm stretched so thin and I'm trying to, to figure out a way to make that not like that, but I, I can't. I'm struggling. Um, I don't get help. I don't have help from anybody. My mom is also suffering from um, shoulder pain. She can't do much of anything. And my husband does not here all the time. And when he does come home, he likes to relax, obviously, because he's worked straight for two weeks and it's hard on him as well. So focal relationship, this has definitely decreased because um, we just don't have the time to spend together. He is never here. Um, he's here for a week and usually it's our focus about the kids, about um, my work. So when he's home, I do all of my filming and um, he's watching the kids and doing errands. So we don't really have that much time. We are going on a date night and everything to do with the virus that has, you know, still kind of, still has influence on people to some extent. Um, coming out of that, we'll be in a better place over summer. But the past few months have been so torturous. Uh, we're both kind of living in this like semi-depressed state where nobody talks to each other. It was just, it was the worst, one of the worst times of our life. Uh, friends, I, we honestly don't really have anybody that we talk to. We have no friends, <laughs> as sad as that is to say. We, we literally don't. Uh, family, I'd say about the same, um, kind of the same thing. Like my mom, she's the only one I really see and her, my relationship is pretty good. She comes over and she helps me if she can. And I try to visit her, but, um, uh, honestly, it, it hasn't really changed from last time. Finances, we paid credit cards, but I still feel on edge because money, uh, we always live paycheck to paycheck. And I want to get to a point where we do have a nice cushion, but I think that's still going to take some time because we still have a quite a bit of financial debt. Our vehicles are paid off, but our um, mortgage is maxed out. Like the, we're at the point right now that our value of our mortgage is higher than the value of our house. <laughs> so and this is so negative, but it, it's true. Um, I'm, I'm stepping into reality here and, and just pointing out facts. So the market, the market is they say it's good for a seller's market, but nobody can afford to live anywhere else. So nobody can buy anything new. <laughs> so I just, um, our, our house, the value hasn't really gone up. Uh, we did get an evaluation done. It's just really bad. So work and learning, uh, kept it the same because I, f I don't feel like I've prog progressed at all. Really. Um, I have, I just haven't seen any progress. So, um, I continue working. I never give up. So that's just kind of stayed the same. Spiritual, I wanted to focus more on spiritual at the beginning of this year, and I just haven't. Again, it comes down to time. So I think I'm, I'm seeing a focus here. I need to figure out that time aspect when it comes to my work and business. And I don't really know what else to do because I get up at five and I go to bed at 11. And I try to work as much as I can when my kids are sleeping or not here. So I don't really know. I'm uh, Maybe you guys can give me some hints or something because I'm, I'm I feel like I'm struggling right now. Um, and recreation, we haven't gone anywhere again because of the situation that's, you know, almost come to pass. And I'm hoping that this will change during summer months because we are planning and going camping. We are planning and going to my reunion this summer, hopefully, cross my fingers. And um, a few a few other things that will happen over summer. So now that things will, are beginning to open up, I think it's going to be better. I'm going to quickly write this out. 
So this is like the prep work refresh. It says what I'm saying yes to this quarter, what I'm saying no to. Uh, I would just want to point something out. So this says try this at home, actually time tracking. So I think I mentioned this in one of my videos. It was either my budget video or my planning video about time tracking. I feel like if I was to actually track how much time I spent doing something every day, I would almost be wasting time just writing it down. But maybe that's a good thing. Like maybe I should try that because if I'm struggling with my time, maybe I need to figure out what I'm spending time on. Like I do read a little bit, like I read about half an hour every day. I don't watch any TV. If I do, it's only while I'm eating and I have to sit down and eat anyway. Um, so sometimes I watch a season of my show while I'm eating and cleaning the dishes. Um, I do a lot of journaling, but that's important. That is one of my goals still. So I wonder if I should start trying to, to time track. Maybe I'll do it as a challenge for myself for this upcoming, like maybe in April I can do that as an upcoming challenge. I think that might be good. And I'll do it on a week when my husband is not home because I know that when he's home, I do a lot more relaxing and stuff that isn't work involved rather than when he is. So maybe I'll do that. So I'm just going to quickly fill out this side here. Okay, so I just, I want to focus on myself more, I guess. Um, I usually say that when I'm reading because I do love to read and I, I kind of consider reading one of my self-care habits, but I, I do want to have more fun things. Um, and we, we do, we have the reunion coming up. We're going to try camping as well. We just need to maybe save a little bit more money for that. But I want to do more fun things with my family and just have more family time, more memories, more pictures. I want to spend less time worrying, stressing, and um, kind of like super OCD things. I don't really want to worry about how clean the house is or um, that everything has to be organized. And part of like my goals for April, March and April was to start cleaning and decluttering. So we're doing the Swedish death cleaning method. So I really wanted to start um, kind of not, not living minimalist, but being a little bit more minimalist than we already are. And in, in that regard, I think it would be beneficial because the less stuff you have, the easier it is to keep it clean. And that's where I'm going with that. Um, so now this is kind of like the keep moving forward page is a little bit of a refresh, um, not a refresh, kind of like a little bit of a reflection on the past quarter and what goals that you've made progress on, what's holding you back and what you need to change to move that goal forward. So I'm going to fill this out and, um, we'll talk about it when I'm done. Um, I feel like the most progress, I, actually, I shouldn't even put the cleaning and organizing because I haven't really done much because I have been feeling um, not as healthy as I, as I you know, have in the past. Um, I want to say I've done lots of stuff with my work, but I don't really know if I do. Like, I, I just continue making videos and I don't really know, know if I've made progress. I did hit, Actually, one goal I could say is I did hit um, 300 followers on Instagram. So thank you guys so much for following. Um, and also I hit 1500 on my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for your support. I just love you guys so much. I love this community. I love making videos and talking about um, planning. Oh gosh, I love planning so much. And so that's actually a big goal. Um, but it, again, it's a goal that I wanted to write down, but it's not really something that I have complete control over. There are things I can do to, you know, to get more people to follow me and to subscribe, but I have no control over somebody who doesn't want to follow my channel, right? The one I put that I feel stuck on, which I don't really know if it's, again, it's kind of out of my control because I need to just wait more time for my, for me and for my business to start making money because all businesses start pretty slow, um, especially when they're right from scratch. So I don't know if that's a good goal for me to say I feel stuck on. Um, I just wish that we didn't have so much debt because I think I'd feel safer if we could have like a little financial nest egg, like a little cushion, um, kind of like an emergency fund. And that will be one of our, our next goals, but we still are working on credit card pay, like debt payoff. 
And then, yeah, I just kind of continued with that, but I don't really know if that's what I should put there. A goal that I feel stuck on, maybe it's making YouTube live videos because it still scares me a little bit. And also maybe, I don't really know what to put for that. So I'm just gonna keep going because I, again, I don't really know. I think for right now, I'm just going to jump to the calendar page. We'll even skip this page. I'm gonna jump here, quickly write out my calendar, and then we'll continue the video on another day. This isn't like the complete picture yet, but I just wanted to explain a few things before I actually do write my goals out. One of my big goals for April, so April, May, and June are going to be like big kind of cleaning months for us. Um, I should say probably another thing on here is the Swedish death cleaning. So I need to figure out when I'm going to finish that. So I've done certain areas of my home already for the month of March, and we're still March 17th. We still have about two weeks to go for March. So we're not done by any means. But I just wanted to show that the big job for April was gonna be the basement. It might actually take more than two days. So we might have to continue it here, but we are going to Red Deer. Uh, this isn't confirmed yet because we haven't talked to our son's grandpa, but we will, would potentially be going to Red Deer the first week of April here and well, I guess the second week of April that weekend anyway. The garage cleaning was going to be set for May but because my husband like the way his work schedule is he has this week off at the end of April so we're going to try to do it here uh, and that's also going to be a huge project. My mom's going to help us with this one because we are planning on having a garage sale in June which I've never had before. It's going to be a huge undertaking which is kind of fitting in with this whole like minimalist um, decluttering lifestyle thing. And we've got lots of birthdays. My son has a spring break. So, um, the, well, I guess not spring break, but Easter weekend. I'm not really sure if that's still spring break, but they have one, two, three, four, five days off. Um, we've got my aunt's birthday, my sister's husband's birthday, another aunt's birthday, and my grandma's birthday. So yeah, four birthdays. And then my daughter's birthday is May 1st. So this is like the weekend we have to be home and I wanted to have everything cleaned up so we can have more people over and we can celebrate my daughter's second birthday. So yeah, so I think that's it for now. So like I said, I don't wanna rush this part of the video because I think it's important, especially if you guys are following along, that I filled this out properly and I just want to not have to rush it. So I'm going to do this on a different day. I might just be able to film it tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video and I'll see you in a little bit. All right. So we are back. This is again, my April goal setting video. And I didn't realize that this was also the spring or like the first quarter reset going into the second quarter. So I just wanted to give myself some time. It's only one day past when I first started the video, but I did some brainstorming this morning and kind of realized what I wanted my next couple of months to look like. The first thing that I did is I took my, I, my goals from the very beginning when I did like this whole setup. And now here I was very vague. I pretty much put the large categories that I had goals in, but I didn't actually go to specifics here. So this time I decided to get a little bit more specific um, and only because I actually do have a lot of work, a lot of different things to do in this, not just this quarter, but this particular, the, particularly this month. What I wanted to do is since last month, well, technically it's still this month for March, um, my husband and I paid off four of our credit cards and one of them we're using on a consistent basis to get the cashback rewards. So one of my goals is to pay it weekly just so that I stay ahead of it and on top of it and I don't let it get out of hand. So that is 
one of the goals. And the second thing is any extra money that we have to start working on new credit cards that we're working on paying off. So that is my finance goal. You can see here that, let me find my goals here. Um, I did break them down into these broad categories. So for instance, the first goal that I had was finance. Wow, I cannot find it now. Let's see. Right here. So finance was pink. Second was health. So for health, of course I put water because that's one of my focuses actually for April. I did these specific challenges for each month and that is one of the challenges. I also put fitness three times a week. So I got these two apps, which I'll detail later on. I wrote them down already. Um, one is like workouts from famous people that is completely free. And then the other one, I only purchased it for three months, but I think I spent 30 to $34 on it for three months. It was given at a discounted rate and it gives you a detailed fitness plan based on your BMI, based on your height, your weight, etc. all that information and what kind of lifestyle you lead. So it gives you a custom workout and it shows you what you need to do. It gives you videos. And so I have that. I don't have anything that tracks my number of steps, but right now, because I'm in a lot of pain and I can't walk that well, it's probably not a good idea that I go walking every day outside. And besides, I have my daughter to look after and my dogs and my business, and I just don't have half an hour to dedicate to a workout, um, even three times a week. It's seriously hard for me. So this allows me to do like seven minutes here, five minutes there, and that will potentially work for me. So that's what I'm doing. And instead of jumping off to seven days a week, which is what the program insists on, I'm just going to give it three times a week because I know that that's a lot more doable. And I don't want to jump into something that I haven't done at all and try to do it like every single day because I know that's just not, I'm, I'm not going to carry through that. So the next one is for personal family and I'm going to focus on minimal cleaning. So what I mean by that is going through the Swedish death cleaning system, going through all of my stuff and getting rid of a lot of stuff. Not everything because I'm not a minimalist, but the stuff that I don't use, the stuff that's broken, the stuff that um, has been sitting around for years and years and years, not touched or looked at by us, it's going. Um, so I do have two projects, which we will get to in a minute. The next one is mental wellness. So I said I'm going to focus on shadow work, and I did set a goal on the next page, which we'll talk about in a shortly. The learning goal, three different books. Um, again, I detail that on the next page. The next one is spiritual. So I want to focus a little bit more on tarot. Um, I have been doing weekly tarot readings for myself, and sometimes I do a three-card reading where I focus on past, present, future. Then sometimes I do a five-card reading or a six-card reading where I put uh, a current weekly reading, not past, present, future, but I do three cards and then one card on top, one card on the bottom. And my goal now is like I'm, I'm slowly starting to understand what the minor arcana and the major arcana, what they mean and the meanings behind each of them when I pull them up. But now I need to understand how they relate to one another in the reading because sometimes when you pull one card up, the next card will kind of take on different meanings depending on other cards in the reading. So um, I also watch um, a, a really, really awesome creator on YouTube. Her name is a gem goddess. I actually can't remember her real name, but she is really, really cool to listen to. And she has lots of good book suggestion ideas. And um, she does tarot readings online. So it's really cool. And so I want to start watching her videos weekly because it just gives me really good inspiration and feel good vibes. Okay. The next one is business growth. So I'm going to focus, of course, on Instagram. I have been posting twice a day, which um, I don't find that challenging, but sometimes I'm like, oh, what am I going to post about? So I have been maybe struggling with it a little bit. And then sticker design. So my goal per week is to do minimum of two, if not more, for sure, some kind of script design. And then the other two would either be a deco, like um, an art design or an icon type of thing because I focus mostly on planning stickers but I do also have some decorative sheets as well 
And then the last thing is my biz organized, streamline, or inspiration. And I decided to focus on time tracking because I have been talking about that recently. And time tracking, I kind of think it's a waste of time to time track in the first place because I am so busy. I don't really feel like I waste a lot of my time. But it would be interesting to note what kinds of things I spend the majority of my time on. And so I can see this getting really complicated. You know how for instance, when you have a lot of habits you want to track, you have a mood tracker. And instead of just tracking, um, you know, five different types of moods, like really unhappy, unhappy, mediocre, happy, or super happy, like see you have, you know, you're angry, you're confused, you're happy, you're sad, you're just meh, like all these different moods, which of course we all experience. It's kind of like that because I do a million and a hundred million things a day. Um, I've, you know, we've all got a hundred million thoughts racing through our head, but there are so many things I do in one day that I think the only way to just do it is the day I start to write down my first task, like literally whatever I do, write down the name of what I'm doing and then track the, the start time, the end time. And then put the full amount of time I spent on that one thing and then do that for everything for that entire day. And I'm going to try to do it for a week. I, I can't see myself doing it for an entire month, but I think a week would be probably show what I do in the course of my business and personal. So I'm going to try doing that. And then my word of the quarter is to minimize and refresh. And I know it, it's kind of synonymous with the the quarter one refresh, I guess it's a quarter two refresh, but refresh means it's kind of in time for spring, like spring cleaning, minimalizing, getting rid of stuff we don't need, cleaning. That's what my focus is right now because we are building up to have a garage sale in June. So, and you will notice I did quite a bit of this stuff offline. And the only reason I did is because this video would be super, super long if I didn't. So I kind of broke down this stuff a little bit more on these next couple of pages. So fitness, I wrote down the apps, minimal cleaning. The two projects are the basement that we, it's going to take probably more than two days. And I only scheduled two days for each of these things. Our garage project hasn't been cleaned in like, since my husband's been here for the last 15, 17 years. Uh, shadow work, I'm going to focus on three pages per week. Um, and this is actually, you'd be surprised, but it's it's uh, very emotionally and psychologically draining. So I feel exhausted. My body feels physically exhausted after I have worked on this. And a lot of times I cry, not going to lie. It's very exhausting um, because I do have a lot of emotional and psychological damage and tra trauma from my younger years, not even necessarily just when I was a kid pretty much starting when I was in my early 20s. So um, this is something that's important to me to work on because I am working on myself. I am an advocate for working on personal development. So that is what I'm doing. Books. I have The Little Book of Auras, The Passage, which um, honestly, guys, I started this book now, but I'm probably not going to finish it by March. And I, my mom found this at Goodwill and she's like, you need to read this book. And I was already reading different books when she gave it to me. So I didn't read it until now, but I've had this for probably about two years now. I'm just starting to read it now. And I've cried already multiple times. And it's not just because I'm an emotional person um, or that I'm an empath, but it's because it is, it's very sad. Um, if you want to check it out, you can. It just, I, I don't know, I, there's, I, ever, ever since I had my kids, and this is just between you and me, ever since I had my kids, I can't watch scary movies that involve kids anymore. Um, before I had kids, it didn't matter. The sky was the limit. And now, anything that involves kids, like if I hear a bad story about a kid on the news, I can't, I just can't watch it. Um, it's like my mind shuts off and I get so emotionally involved in the situation that um, I just need to take a break. So I cannot hear bad stuff about kids happening. It just kills me inside. And that's, this book is a little bit about that. And it just makes me really super sad. 
Um, but then the other nonfiction book I'll be reading is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And then for sticker design, I just wrote exactly what I wanted to do. And then the time tracking, um, just some ideas here. And then I also have my daughter's birthday. Doesn't technically fall in April. It's actually May 1st, but we'll be doing all of the planning at the end of April. So that's what I just wrote a little list here of things I wanted to do. And then some of my time tracking ideas. All right. So this is getting into the prepare well page. So this is again, basically back to our regular goal setting. So what I was thinking is important to do's. I don't think I added everything on here that I'll put on the tending list. Um, we'll kind of get to that when we do the brainstorming page here. Um, this is where I put everything that would officially go on this page. But I'm excited for the weather, of course. Um, and, and minimalizing all of our stuff because the clutter I think is kind of wearing me down a bit. On my mind, just a lot of the stuff that I'm concerned about or worried about. And I'm hopeful that I can complete my goals by the end of the month. And yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm worried about not so much the garage because a lot of times like, like I've got stuff in my basement that I've had since I was a child. I've had, I've held on to some of my childhood toys and stuff. And I feel like I have a lot of emotion associated with that. And I don't know why. And I don't know whether to get rid of it or to keep it. And like, what do you guys do? Do you, do you keep stuff from your childhood? And if so, how much do you keep? Do you limit it to one thing? Do you limit it to a box, like one single box of things? Um, or do you have a whole bunch of stuff? Like I also have stuff from when my dad passed away. So I was 24 when he died and I unfortunately was the executor of the will. And I was also the eldest involved in being uh, the executor of the estate. So I had to, to figure out where everything would go. I had to sell stuff because it was unrealistic for me to keep everything. Of course, it was an estate sale that we had. Um, and I still ended up with a lot of stuff and some of that sitting in my basement as well. I'm pretty sure I kept a storage unit full of his stuff that I kept uh, for like seven years. Um, it was actually pretty, pretty hard on me because it was his stuff, not my stuff, but he was a hoarder and he never really decluttered his stuff. So um, yeah, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this Swedish death cleaning because I don't want to be a hoarder and I don't want my kids or any of my other family to have to go through all of my stuff like I did with my dad. So that is part of the reason, friends. All right. So you guys have already seen this calendar. We walked through this the day before, or in your case, the beginning of this video. Um, so this is not everything but i do work from this like this entire plan this and then this sheet here i work from this and then i go into my franklin planner for april and that video will be coming up um it, it kind of works a little a little weird this month because um the official first week of april is like what day is it april 3rd or april 4th or something like that and so i don't think i'll actually have the monthly posted until I think it's the first or second so I try to have it the 30th or the 31st but it falls in the middle of the week and I always try to stick to a Saturday or Sunday so that is what's happening there so I won't be doing that this weekend um, I think it'll be I don't even think it's the weekend after that I think it's one more weekend so it's still in two weeks so I'll be doing that video so anyway um, what I want to do is get started on here. I'm going to brainstorm all of the monthly, weekly, and daily ideas that will eventually make it to this page. Most likely, I'll have more items on this page than will be here because we can only fit two, four, six, eight, uh, ten monthly items. There's two, four, six weekly. I always write it down. Well, I think it in my head, but and then two, four, six, seven daily ideas. So um, this is what I track. So 10, six, and seven, let's get started. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so normally what I do is I jump right into my tending list and then we talk about that. Um, but this is where I want to kind of talk to you guys about if you are following along doing your goal planning in your Cultivate What Matters goal planner, this is kind of where you can brainstorm, you can write down as many ideas that you can fit on the page as you can, but you cannot carry all of them over to the tending list, right? You've got 10 monthly ideas, six weekly, and seven daily so uh sometimes what i do i just want to show you guys that when i do feel the need to carry something over and it doesn't fit i put it on the top at the bottom like i did here i did here but you know it, sometimes it doesn't pay to track all of the things i think especially when it comes to daily these are the things that you're turning into habits right so if you guys one of my recommended reading that I'm actually reading myself right now is Atomic Habits by James Clear. So that's something, you don't necessarily have to read that book. It's just, if something is truly important to you and it makes sense in the long run and it helps you out, it helps to create a routine where you have those good habits that you do all the time, whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, the night, whenever you have time to do them. Once they become a habit, it becomes part of your routine. You no longer have to track it. You no longer have to think about it. And that's what I'll probably do here. So the things that I really do need to work on, and the only person who's going to know this information is yourself, because you're the one who knows what you do throughout your day. So for instance, I don't need help. Um, like I don't need to write down reading or journaling because I do those things every day automatically. It's not something that I need to work on or that I need to track. Um, the same with the 10 minute tidy. I usually clean up after my daughter goes to sleep for her nap and at bedtime. So I suppose I don't really have to track that either. Um, Instagram, I'm still working on, and I think I would like to keep tracking that. Same as expenses. And um, I need to track the water and the workout. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So instead of tracking sleep, I would probably track up at five and bed by 11. So say, for instance, I go to bed at 11.05, I'll probably still check that off as going to bed by 11. But if it's 11.30 or later, I'm probably not going to be able to check it off. Same with up at five. If I get up at 5.15, I'll probably still count it as being up at five. But if I wake up at six, it's a no-go. So I think those are the areas I'll do there. For weekly ideas, I only get six, okay? And when I'm looking at this stuff, um, I'll probably put all of this together. This is all part of my budget. And I'll probably write it all separate down on the line only because um, I need to learn how to budget better. First of all, I need to focus on the expenses and learning how to cut back, but also learning how to expense and budget properly. So um, a lot of times I'll budget not enough for non-food items and too much for food. And then I end up spending um, the money that was for food on non-food items and then run out of money for food. So it's just, I need to figure out what the best thing is. But for us, it seems to fluctuate so much over the course of each month that it's been difficult for me to do. And the only one that can know who, uh, what those numbers are is me. Like nobody, like 
my husband's not really involved, but I'm talking about even people looking at it from an outside perspective. You guys can look at it and say, well, this is what I would do, but that's from your perspective. And the only one who can actually judge that is myself. So it's been hard. It's been definitely a struggle. I also need to pay off my MasterCard weekly because we're charging on it for that cash back. So that's important. And then also keeping track of our uh, savings challenge because we're following the budget mom, Kimiko Love. She had this savings challenge posted to her website and that's what we're doing. So all of that is important for us to follow this month. Mental wellness. I do this stuff anyway and I do track it in my passion planner which I use as a secondary form of goal planning and goal setting and maintaining my goals and that's more to follow along with the 12-week year because I do change my goals weekly according to what I need. Um, this is almost an overview so that will focus on like the smaller cleaning projects and maybe smaller things within my business itself. Um, and also I, I cover a lot of my journaling stuff, which, which does cover my mental wellness. So I track my shadow work, how many pages I've done per week. I also track my journaling. So I do three different types of journaling. I, um, long form journal, which is in this journal here. It's a Lang journal by the Lang company. Um, I also do prompts, so I get a specific prompt from the internet, and I only journal about that topic. It's similar what they make you do in health in uh, junior high, they, starting in grade 7 and grade 8, grade 9, and you take health, and they say, okay, I'm here's a topic, journal about it, and then you have to hand it in to your teacher. That's kind of what I do. And then I also keep journals for my kids because I think when they get older, I think it would be valuable for them to read. I also do my shadow work, which I have here, and I also want to work on meditation. But instead of tracking it here because I want to focus on different things, I haven't been meditating and I want to start, but I just, this has been over the last three months now, I just haven't done it. So I don't know what it's going to take for me to make that into a habit. Um, spirituality, I want to get more involved with that. So this kind of comes down to that time tracking. I need to figure out what's what I'm doing and if there's anything that I can get rid of so that I don't have to uh, waste time and I can focus on things like meditation and spirituality more. Um, stickers. So that's just tracking to see whether I've done my stickers or not. I do keep track of that in my happy planner. So that might be something I don't need to do. Purging, cleaning, and organizing. This is important because along with those two big projects, I'm still going through every area of the house and I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff for our garage sale. Commonplace book. This is something I'm also working on. I cannot seem to complete it every week. Um, March, I've already failed one week and I don't want to use the term fail. That's the wrong word, but I, I didn't complete my goal for that week. and. Um, and, and that upsets me because I set the goals for a reason. It's to improve my my knowledge, my personal growth. So, um, and then the last one is art project. Same thing. I just feel like I haven't had time to work on it. Um, and when it, my daughter is sleeping and my son is about to go to bed, I'm either just too exhausted to work on it or I'd rather be doing something else. And when my son is sleeping over at my mom's, when I have quiet time, I'm usually reading or um, playing my Neverwinter Nights game. So yeah, I just, I feel like it's a time thing. And I think we've already talked about the daily and for the monthly, it's just, I don't know how I'm going to uh, get this down to 10. So I know that I want to do this one and this one. That's two, three, four, five, um, six. Yeah. Hmm. I do want to include all of this. So I think what I'll do here is categorize this as a plan. Like I'll break one of the bars up into four. So that's another one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that leaves me with nine. And then maybe I could do 
family time and date night. We only have one date night though because we're going to Red Deer potentially. Maybe for a change I'll actually leave one of the spots open and then down here I have enough. So Okay, without talking anymore, because I think I've talked your guys' ear off. Hey guys, so I don't know what happened. My husband came home with my daughter and my video wasn't filming for some reason. So I had filled all of this out with you. I never really talked about it. I just kind of showed you how I filled it out. Um, these are the things I decided to actually track on my tending list. So you guys can get a, a little glimpse here. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it's helped you in some capacity. Um, perhaps you were follow following along or just wanted to get some ideas for your own goal setting for the month of April. So if you really enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please subscribe if you're new here. I would love to grow my family here on YouTube. Share the video with somebody else who you feel is in need of some goal setting or goal planning. And click on the bell button to be notified every time I upload new videos. And we will talk to you guys again soon. Bye, friends.